I managed to get the knockout luckily in the first minute just by doing this. I was jabbing the stomach, I kept looking at the stomach and then I had my opponent on the rope and I bridged in, I looked low and I came high and I caught him on the chin. Hi everyone, welcome to Van Run Martial Arts. I'm here with one of my great friends, Brad Riddell. He's from Quake Combat. He recently set up a new YouTube channel addressing striking for mixed martial arts and for Muay Thai and kickboxing. He's fought all over the world. He's got a really uh, amazing name for himself. If I'm not mistaken, he's an IKBF world champion. Is that right, Brad? Yep. That's yep. Right. Awesome. So, um, he's got a wealth of knowledge to share. And today, he's going to be teaching us about how to set up uh, his jab and rear hand, his cross, with misdirection and fainting and uh, breaking the patterns of body language that make it difficult for the other fighter to adjust and keep them in a reactive state. I'm really looking forward to this. Um, so Brad, please take it away. Tell us what we're going to do. Alrighty guys, so today, uh, like Kyle said, we're going to go over some uh, misdirectional feints. So it's a little bit different to your standard fake, which you guys can see on some of my previous videos. But um, what I'm going to do is just manipulate uh, the way my body moves and I'm going to line up my lead hand and my rear hand which uh, I've been teaching to a friend of mine Alex Volkanovsky who's in the UFC and he's had a lot of success with this so far so uh, yeah I'm going to get into it and show you guys how it's done if I'm standing here with my opponent I'm going to demonstrate quickly what a fake is so a fake looks like this so I'm trying to draw a reaction out from a specific shot so in this case I'm faking my jab my foot stays behind and my lead leg only moves and I don't step into range, I step close to range just in case Kyle reacts. So how I'm going to do this, the reason I call this a misdirectional feint is because I'm actually going in and making contact with Kyle. Okay, so I'm using my body direction to trick him. So I'm going to jab Kyle's stomach, boom, okay. And so I drop low, I have my shoulder behind my fist because this is the Strongest way to punch is my, my wrist has the most support this way, okay? My shoulder's rolled up, my jaw's hidden behind my shoulder, my other hand's up, and my knuckle's turned down. Okay, I always turn my knuckle down so I connect with these two, so it makes my punch harder and hurt more. I'm squatted, I'm in a ply lunge, and I'm nice and evenly balanced. I'm not too heavy on my front, I'm not too heavy on my back so that I can pop out quickly. Boom, okay? And as you notice guys, my face and my eyes are looking at his stomach. Okay, so I'm always looking where I'm going to go because I'm going to use this to fake. This is another type of fake, is using my face and using my eyes and just trying to sell it, telegraph it where I'm going. So I step in and jab, boom. Okay, I'm aiming for the floating ribs or the stomach. It's not too big a concern. I step back up. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. My body language is exactly the same. Nothing changes. I drop down. The only difference this time is I'm going to throw my arm up at 45 degrees. Okay, so I'm looking like I'm going to do a salute. So I'm down here. And I, I'm going to drop it and jab and jab up, boom, like this, okay, so I'm aiming for the face. The reason I do this is because if I create the pattern of always jabbing the stomach, the person will suck in like this or, or tuck in like that or come like parry, it, it, it doesn't matter. So as I go to do that, I just change my direction, boom, and I come up, okay. And from here, once I'm here, I'm going to throw my rear hand from this level. I don't straighten up personally, okay. Some people do, but I prefer not to. I prefer to stay down here because I feel safe, because it's hard for Carl to throw a knee when his head's been snapped back like this from the jab. Okay, so the knee and stuff isn't a major concern because I'm coming from an MMA perspective. This is a great position for me to shoot and do a takedown, okay? But if we're in Taekwondo, bang, I throw my jab, and now I'm gonna cannon my rear hand in, and I'm gonna pitch a punch with my elbow. Okay, this is just a bullet and a gun, it's useless by itself, my fist. So I'm gonna turn my back heel, I'm gonna stay low, I'm gonna throw my elbow in and drive my elbow, I'm gonna turn my back foot like this, boom. Okay, so you see, I'm still nice and low, I've hooked over my head, my shoulder's nice and high and my jaw's protected, so I'll land this punch like that, okay? So the whole thing, guys, I'm gonna jab to the stomach, bang, I create the pattern, Carl gets used to me dropping down, I'm gonna go down and come up, boom. Yeah. So guys, we're gonna go over another misdirectional feint, but I'm just gonna use my rear hand now. So previously we were talking about my jab. We were, using, we were jabbing to the body and using that little change to jab high and set this up. And I call this a drop jab, because my body's dropping and my jab's coming up. 
Now we're going to do it with the rear hand. So I can throw my jab to the head and I'm going to throw my straight to the gut. Okay, and the benefit of anyone that has a Taekwondo background, like Kyle here, is you guys are very, very good at bridging the gap, something that I call bridging the gap, and everyone sees it different, but all I mean is exploding inwards, right? You guys have great fast switch fiber. Boom, you're very successful at doing this, so this is perfect for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jab to the head, and this time, I'm gonna look at the stomach, and I'm gonna drop my rear hand down to the gut. So I bridge in, boom, and I keep doing this. I keep attacking the stomach with my rear hand like this, so I create this pattern. This is a very powerful shot, especially if I'm staying left-handed and Carl's right-handed, it's a very open target. Carl's gonna start doing the same thing, he's gonna start buckling down every time I go to the gut. Might move his hand down, something like this. So now I'm gonna do a drop two. I call the backhand a number two. So I'm gonna drop my weight down as I jab to the head, but my punch is gonna come high. Back! Like that. Okay. So the most important thing guys to generate power for this other than my body weight is turning my back heel as far as I can so that this will push my hip forwards. As you can see, as my hips are like this, even if I'm square, right now, I can't reach Carl, okay? But when I just turn my back heel, I can reach Carl because I'm pushing my rear hip in front of my lead hip. When I stand left-handed, my right hip is dominant. It's always forward, so I'm gonna have further reach on this. So if I drive my, my rear hip forwards, boom, I can reach the same with my rear hand. Alrighty guys, so I'll show you that one more time. I'm gonna throw one, two to the stomach. Boom. Okay, remember I'm looking there, I'm faking with my eyes, now I do the same body mo motion and movement and I punch high. Bang! Alrighty guys, so you're gonna see me use this in this video. Um, we're gonna put a little clip up of a recent fight that I had in China against a Russian guy. And I managed to get a knockout luckily in the first minute just by doing this. I was jabbing the stomach, I kept looking at the stomach, and then I had my opponent on the rope. And I bridged in, I looked low and I came high and I caught him on the chin. Just because he put his hand down like that, thinking the two was coming to the stomach, and I successfully came over the top Fantastic. and got the knockout. Nice, again. Yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in to today's video, folks. That was Brad Riddell, IKBF World Kickboxing Champion, breaking down misdirection with a jab and rear hand. Honestly, having sparred with him and worked with him here in Auckland at City Kickboxing, his home gym, it's pretty hard to see those things coming and it really throws you off your game. These are principles that are really essential for every martial artist. You know, Deception is something that's ingrained in the traditions of martial arts over the last couple of thousands of years. In The Art of War by Sun Tzu, which some of you might know, he mentions that if two forces, two armies are evenly matched, the one that engages in deception is the one that's going to come out victorious. It's stuff that we can't overlook. Even the techniques of keeping your head off the line, those subtleties with keeping the shoulder up, how you're bridging the gap, or how you're blitzing as we call it, getting the foot set, all essential elements for setting up the hands in ITF Taekwondo, Waco kickboxing, or whatever your discipline is. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you get over to Quake Combat. That's Brad's new YouTube channel. Um, we've also got another video that's being uploaded right now onto the channel, so check that out. It's the first in a series of collaborations that we're doing together. Please don't forget to subscribe and comment down below. Let us know what you thought of this video. Thank you again, Brad. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, Carl. Awesome, brother. Cheers.